So, quiet, quiet back there. You, shut up. All right. <laughs> Apparently, you're getting sick of what I'm doing, or you really hate pirates. Because that last video got nothing. And I, I admit, I'm, uh, I've been holding back a lot of stories because... I've got two guys now. It's, it was five. One guy wants to write a book. Well, he's been saying that for five years. Another guy, the other guy that wanted to do the biopic or doc, whatever. Dude, he's he's too out of it. I think he's he's got his mind is all over the place. He wants to make you know some kind of Star Wars on drugs. So, you know, farewell. I can't. I, you know. This is stupid. I've for five years I've been trying to get crap done. Well, let me see. 2016, I figured out I was ready to be. I could play well enough to do an album. And uh, and and then do this documentary thing. And I didn't have to play to do the documentary, but I had to play to do the album. So, I can do it. I mean, these hit and miss days like I had last time on that SG, I just couldn't play. That was that. The hand still doesn't feel right. There's something wrong. I think uh, it's in my workout, but whatever. I ain't getting the hits. And I know I can tell when I put, when I use Randy Road stuff, I get, you know, some views. But I'm only getting like, on a good video, I get a, a hundred views. And on the average, I get like 20 or 30, 40. That's crap. I And I don't know what to do. I'm not going to sit here and talk on that. I've got an hour left on this memory card. Um, I don't know. I'll see if I can think of something while I play a little bit. And, you know, you guys, no one ever tells me to play anything except, you know, we play some Randy Rose. Well... I don't know that much because I don't play other people's junk. And the other day I was playing something and I'm like, hey, this sounds pretty good. I'll play it for you. It's a song. It's a song. I'm not going to tell you what it is because people can never tell what the hell I'm playing anyways. But it's a song from a band, when their first album. I hate the band, to tell you the truth. And I'm not really uh, hip on the guitar player who thinks... Everybody seems to think this guy's great. He's not. He's very average. He's better than me, but he's average. That's why he's never become this great. He's just thrown in there with all the 80s guitar players. When actually he was on the scene in the friggin' 70s. He just he just doesn't have have what it takes. He didn't stand out. He always had the haircut of a 12-year-old boy. And the dumb, the singer of the band that he was in never he sang. So everybody else is screaming. This guy can't scream. He tried to scream. He blew his voice out. And there you go. And they are always following trends. And this guy always followed trends. George Lynch. 
So he would always, like, he was trying to be like Eddie Van Halen. Like, Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen would do this, he would do it, you know. But he came on the scene about the same, I mean, a little after Van Halen. But So what? Everybody did the Van Halen thing when Van Halen blew up. In 78 and 79, when they went out on tour, and then they came back after their second tour and were headlining the Forum multiple nights, everybody's like, holy crap! So that was like one of the first L.A. boom. And then everybody got together and tried to repeat it, but, you know, there was a glam and uh, new wave thing going. So that wasn't... The next Van Halen wasn't going to happen. I mean, believe me, Snow, which turned into Quiet Riot with Kevin Dubrow singing, that was a little mini Van Halen. Smile, mini Van Halen. Uh, <laughs> Quiet Riot was trying to be like a, you know, like an English pop glam, but... And, you know, Randy was kind of into that, but Randy was more of a heavy... He, he liked Alice Cooper. He liked that kind of stuff. So that clashed big time. So actually when... Because you think Ozzy was never the madman or never did these, you know... You know, he was in Black Sabbath. They didn't have to try too hard to be evil. The name was, in, you know, implied it. I guess I'm talking too much, but you guys want to hear me talk, right? <laughs> So, the whole thing with Ozzy going into this castle madman thing in 1982 was the perfect timing because Alice Cooper was out of the picture completely. He was whacked out on coke and on uh, alcohol. So he was out of the picture until about 86 when he came back. And when he came back, Ozzy, you know, said, hey, you know, you know I'm ripping you off. And Ozzy kind of went into his own direction as a, like, a, just a drug-addled freak. But now, Alice was the way more, you know, beheading people and a lot of more. Yeah, I love Alice. Alice over everybody. It's Alice and then everybody else. So anyways... The whole, that whole image, you know, I'm, I know that Randy had a part in that, driving it towards that. Because he was a huge Alice Cooper fan. I mean, look at, you know, and Elvis. And if you look at his Diary of a Madman costume or outfit, Randy's, his belt is patterned after Elvis's belt with those little chains hanging. Elvis. He loved Elvis. So there's your thing for today. Randy and Elvis. Thank you. 
two views um i'm just you know whatever i'll tell you a story here's a story let me see let me think because it's i don't want it to have anything to do with motley crew and here's a story that just pisses me off every time i think about rap the, like the second time i saw him was at the roxy and jakey lee was in the band and they had, were throwing out these little frisbees, or little red frisbees that said rat on them. And they all had a couple of them in front of them so they could pick them up and throw them out. This is at the Roxy, so you can't really chuck them too far. So Jake wasn't throwing any of his out into the audience. So I went to grab one, and he stepped on my hand. I was like 16. And I'm like you know, dick, and he's laughing, so when he went to pick one up, I grabbed it out of his hand, and just threw it backwards, and he's like, and I'm like, ever since then, I haven't liked Jakey Lee, because he's just a dick, he really is a dick, and I was listening to this song uh, that Lemmy and Ozzy did, about I'm not a nice guy after all, Ozzy really isn't a nice guy, ever, I've met that guy like a dozen times, you know, at music things, and then when my ex-wife worked for the Osbournes, he never said anything, never, so he's either very rude, or very wasted, or very whatever, but I've never had him say hi, nothing, Sharon, yes, the kids, yes. Everybody, never Ozzy. The only time he said anything to me is when I he threw the... I was having him sign the plate for my Jackson V. And I put the, you know, CD up there. It was the Black Sabbath Live. He signed it, you know. Never looking up, never saying hi. All the other guys in the band were. And he just sees it. And so I slid the, the round plate for the toggle switch. I slid it to him. And he's like... Throws it behind him and it pops Jack Osborne in the head. This is I tell this story on that Randy Rhodes and I documentary thing. So, you know, Jack picks it up. I'm like, dude. And Sharon takes it from him and hands it to me. I go, hey, can't you sign this for me? I just paid like, I told him I paid $3,000. I only paid like seventeen, I think, hundred for the Jackson. It's the third one off the line. So that's what makes it special. It's signed by Dolores Rhodes on the control panel uh, plate. And then the toggle plate, Ozzy signed it. He's like, he, oh, first he goes, 
Oh, you trying to tell me you have Rand Rondu's polka dot V? And I'm like, no, the one that they're putting out, like the the tribute one. I just bought it, and this is the plate to it. I wanted you to sign it. And he's like, I've got no idea what you're talking about. And Sharon just said, sign it. And so he signed it, and then pushed it back to me. I'm like, what a, what an idiot. So people, I walk outside, and people are like, dude, you talked to Ozzy, dude. I'm like, he's an asshole. Didn't you see him? He's, a, he's either wasted, or he's completely brain dead. I think it's a combination. But he is a dick. And Lemmy, who I've met dozens of times, mostly at the Rainbow, was the nicest friggin' guy almost ever. First time I talked to him was for, for like four hours. He just wanted to fig. He couldn't figure out this. Why are all these guys dressing up like girls? And some of them you can't tell the difference. And they're getting all the girls. Are they all, you know, lesbian? He didn't. He couldn't figure it out. So when I walked in with my entourage of girls and two guys or whatever to, you know, in case I mouthed off, I couldn't fight for crap. I had to sucker punch everybody. But he said, hey, and I'm like, holy crap, that's that dude from Motorhead, Ace of Space. That's all I knew. This is like 87. So I walked over to him, and he's sitting at the bar, and I never went to the bar. I always went out to the dining area. If you've ever been to the Rainbow, you know what I'm talking about. So I went to the bar. He was sitting behind the bar, and I went and sat there, and he says, here, pull up a, a stool. Let's talk. I, I got some questions for you. You know, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to do the accent, but just picture Lemmy. So he's like, how is it that you dress up like a bird and get all these birds? And, of course, luckily I knew what he was talking about, and I wasn't dressing up like a bird. I'm like, well, apparently they like it. I mean, I started doing it, you know, kind of before Motley Crue because of Kiss but then and alice cooper but you know motley crew kind of got me going to oh sweet sweet wrote great songs the sweet but they look like crap new york dolls they look great but they played like crap so motley crew was kind of like the thing where they were pretty good playing and they looked good and they all did look good at the beginning <laughs> Um, but that's, you know, so I talked to Lemmy the first time for about four hours in about six Long Islands, and he just wanted to know what, what's the deal? Because this is, I guess he just got into town and he couldn't figure it out. I think it was around 87. And then I, I ran into him several times there and I, he, I just go over and talk to him say, Hey, Lemmy, how's it going? He's like, Oh, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm like, eh, you know, ups and downs not really, you know. He goes, just hang in there. Hang in there, kid. If it's meant to happen, it'll happen. If it's not, then you'll do something else. I'm like, he's right. This isn't this isn't the end. I mean, and I had my cutoff point of 30 years old. And, you know, at 25, you know, I'm like, I still have five years. I'll make it. At 27, I was like, <laughs> at 28, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to start wrapping things up. 29, I was still playing. 30, I was still playing in the Randy Rose Tribute Band and this other band, Terrace 49, which I wish the friggin' singer would call back. And uh, we actually sounded really good. If we, would, if we were around in 85 instead of the beginning of 95, we would have been signed immediately. We sounded pretty damn good. And I was playing bass. At that point, to me, I was just laying back playing bass because I was really good and I am a very good bass player still it's just it's not fun to play so <laughs> that's it he was right and at 30 I had to switch and it took me about two years to get everything you know off of the drug off of all the substance abuse off all the f f stuff and start acting like a human and then when I got myself established, 
you know, I was worked my way up until, and I'm still working my way up. Nothing happened until. It's just my plan was derailed, but I'm still on track. I hope you understand that. Like, my plan was to have a ranch-ish house up in southern Utah by 40, which I accomplished, and to stay there. The only part it is, is I, I'm back here. In Burbank, half the time, helping my parents, and in Utah, half the time, gaining my sanity. <laughs> or sometimes just Nevada. I have a place in southern Utah that I can escape to. I can get there within, like, hours, a couple hours, a few. Just passed right inside, and I'm there. And it helps me, believe me, to survive. I didn't think, you know... Things happen when your parents get old. You got to take care of them. Da, 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 da. So the end with that. You, no one needs to know too much about my personal life. Believe me. That's why I travel a lot. I just I stay with them when they need help doing things, and then I get the hell out of here, and I go. And no one, except my son, knows where that other place is. Just like he knows about the bank account and all that stuff. Why I went that far, I don't know. I might cut this off. <laughs> but you guys seem to like stories, and I know I'm going way too long. So later, subscribe, comment, do whatever the hell you want. I appreciate it if you do. I really do. But I don't think anybody's going to watch this anyways. I can't even remember what I talked What did I just talk about? I don't know. Oh, Lemmy and Ozzy. Yeah, because they did a song together like, I'm not a nice guy after all. I don't know if Ozzy is a really nice guy. Maybe he is to his family. But to other people, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> Unless he's wasted. But I've seen him wasted. He... Whatever. So, let me... See, the good guys always poop, pop off. The other ones are like roaches and they just keep living. Ah, it doesn't make sense to me. But it doesn't need to make sense to me. It doesn't need to at all. Because this is just a fleeting moment in your eternal progression towards whatever. <laughs> Yeah.